In this uh, grasshopper tutorial episode, we have uh, your question section, and this week questions goes for Akash, and he asks, "Can you also give a tutorial on the basics of kangaroo?" Uh, okay, so I'm going to just explain two examples in kangaroo physics and kangaroo two, so you can understand what happens in the modeling. Uh, physical modeling in grasshopper. So basically I'm going to model a simple surface here and then give this a uh, physical property as you can see here and we can give this a weight so simply we can give this weight in the uh, minus z direction or the plus z direction. Uh, we can also put some forces on the some points so you can see here I can just uh, take these points up and down. This will be for the grasshopper uh, kangaroo physics plugin. And next, I will also talk about the kangaroo 2, which you can simply uh, model a uh, surface. Then you can give this uh, something like a weight. You can see here it's exactly like the kangaroo physics plugin. And also, you can give this uh, some points. We can simply move these points when, uh, wherever we want. We can move this up and down and have the results. So it's just uh, uh, gives you better results compared to kangaroo physics. But for kangaroo physics, uh, you have a simple interface. And for the kangaroo 2, we have some points we have to talk about. So basically, this tutorial will be answering your questions about uh, kangaroo and an introduction so you can understand how uh, kangaroo plugins uh, work. Okay, to start from scratch, uh, I'm going to draw a simple surface here. So let's just uh, make a rectangle surface here, a rectangle plane. And here we go. Okay, so this is our starting point. And uh, I'm going to explain how uh, Kangaroo Physics works. So, first of all, we have the Kangaroo Physics plugin. Uh, you can easily install this by going to the Kangaroo Physics, which I will put the installation uh, file in, a, in my website. So, when you download this, you can simply put these files and copy these files into the file special folder and component folder and you can also uh, have these user object files you can select them all and simply drag them into the grasshopper interface and they will be installed uh, you have to reset your rhino close your rhino and again open it and we will have a uh, kangaroo physics here or simply kangaroo uh, for the kangaroo 2.4 you can simply have this zip file and put these two files kangaroo 2 and kangaroo solver into the file special folder and component folder and then you can reset your uh, rhino and again run grasshopper okay so first of all we have the kangaroo physics and this one is going to be simple. You have a kangaroo physics here, and we have two uh, kangaroos. We have a kangaroo physics, and we have a zombie uh, kangaroo. Uh, the kangaroo physics will give you the forces and will show you an animation of how the forces react to each other, so you can understand this. And for the kang uh, zomb uh, zombie kangaroo, you will have no animation. You will see the results when the forces just act on a surface or a model. So we will mainly use kangaroo physics here. So we have three inputs. We have the geometry, we have anchor points, we have force objects. And you can see that we have to give some information for these three inputs. Uh, I'm going to first talk about the geometry of the kangaroo physics plugin. And the first and the most important thing is that when we work with kangaroo, we usually uh, need a mesh. So if you have a NURBS surface like this, you can simply go to the Mesh menu utility and use the Mesh Surface tool. I'm going to use the Mesh Surface tool and connect the surface to this. Okay, just turn this off. 
let's go to display uh, check this if you have the display preview mesh edge on or just simply uh, use control M so I'm going to give this a U count and a V count okay so it's maybe a tw 20 to 20 mesh base uh, the more you have the more accurate the surface will be formed so this will be the first step remember you have to give a mesh surface to, ge to the geometry you will be just simplify things and the next step is to give the anchor points and that uh, and they are the points which will not move and will remain fixed as it explained there okay so now I'm going to have this surface and maybe just give this four points here I can delete this or just hide this okay now I can import four points here and these are the corners now I can give these to the anchor points okay and the next step is to give this force we have to give this at least one force now so I'm going to go to the kangaroo and the utility this is the most simple tool you can use and that's springs from mesh so if you have a mesh you can simply convert your mesh to the springs and you can also use gravity you can use pressure you can use uh, wind and even planarized quads and that's okay so I'm going to use uh, springs from mesh because this tutorial is just explaining this I will try to record a course on the kangaroo plugin so in the future just be uh, just check out my channel or my website and perhaps we will have a course on this kangaroo plugin so now I'm going to connect this mesh to the springs from mesh and the first and the most simple thing you can do is to convert your mesh to springs and that's that will be the force object okay so the stiffness is 1000 that's okay you can change this increasing the stiffness will just make your surface a stiff one and decreasing will just make it more plastic so the B input you can see that it's a, a simple user object tool so just return to this we will have a number from 0 to 1 and basically a 0 means that uh, the springs uh, can go uh, to the length of zero so this uh, assume that this is a spring okay these springs can go and just be a length to the zero or they can be one so the one will be no deformation in the springs they can just turn or rotate in this space so we can just move this to whatever we want and change it in the results now we are ready that's that's the most simple example you can do with kangaroo so I'm going to turn this off and have the geometry out here so I'm going to connect a mesh here and here we go we're good to go double click on the kangaroo physics tool and just play this you can see that this will uh, produce a simple surface uh, that that has converted to springs basically so we can just move this uh, connections and anchor points you can see that the results just updating you can simply take this up or maybe scale these a little bit okay so uh, you can also change this number okay so I have changed this number but you can see that the results are not good so I'm going to just hit the uh, stop again and play now you can see what happens is that the two points because they have been moved uh, they don't affect the mesh so we have to make those points again on the first place uh, this is the drawback of kangaroo physics but we have no problem with kangaroo 2 so you can check that out and have uh, whatever points you want to move or have the reset uh, location of the points or the new location of the points you want to just measure okay so uh, now I'm going to uh, give this a little bit of a weight okay so we can go to the kangaroo physics menu utility and use a gravity simple gravity here okay you can give this a mesh and minus default is minus 9.8 and that's G Z direction minus one 
Okay, maybe 100 to 100 and add this to the forces because this is a force and just uh, for, for being safe, I'm going to right click and flatten this input. Okay, and just play this. You can see that the gravity will just affect this and you can give it a plus Z direction gravity or minus Z gravity. Okay. So this is the most simple thing you can do with this kangaroo physics and you can also uh, bake this mesh, okay? And uh, let's assume that your O snap vertex is on. Let's just produce some points here. Okay, let's just delete this and put these points, set multiple points and add this to the anchor points. So I'm going to flatten this again to be sure that we have right set of data. And you can see that these points, okay, let's just give this a gravity. And these points will not move and we can just move them up and produce a model simply by moving the mesh points. And here we have the model. We can also uh, have all the points around a mesh for the anchor points. You can go to the kangaroo physics and the mesh and use the naked vertex here. Okay. So basically that is a naked vertex. If you give this to the mesh, we have two set of points. We have the clothed points. So you can see that they have neighbors and naked points, which are on the corners. And we can also give this to the anchor points, okay? And now we can just, I'm going to delete this points here. And again, let's give this a plus, maybe a thousand. So we can inflate this surface. You can see we can inflate this and have this baked, have a rhino simply by just having all the corners as uh, anchor points. Okay, so this is a simple one. We can work on this. We can have uh, these points, work on the points and make a simple tensile structure, but that will be for another tutorial. But let's just go to the kangaroo 2 example. So let's assume that we have a surface and a mesh. And how can we do this similar example in Kangaroo 2? Uh, okay, in Kangaroo uh, here, we can see Kangaroo 2 here. We can simply have uh, a solver here for solving the uh, physical model. You can also have a bouncy solver. This will just use the momentum to, uh, okay, let's just, let me show you this. You can see that solver with momentum and you can also use the zombie solver and other things. So I'm going to simply use a solver here. Okay. Uh, we have a goal object. So there must be some goals here. Something has changed now. The first thing you have to do is to put show on the interface and connect those things that you want from the output. So Basically, I want the mesh so I can uh, connect this to the show tool and connect this to the goal objects. So we can see that the, from the output, we have one mesh here and that's really important. And next we need a force uh, on the, okay, we need exactly like this. We need the anchor points. Uh, we need the anchor points. Okay, so let's go for the anchor points. I'm going to go to the goals point. You can see we have an anchor. We can even define an anchor X, Y, Z. Uh, we can have a plastic anchor. These are all cool things you can do with uh, points, but I'm going to use an anchor, a simple anchor point here. So I'm going to give this an anchor. And that's the most important thing we have to give here. Okay, let's just uh, put the bifocals plugging on this. Okay, you can see. Uh, now I can give the four corners of this. Let's assume that we have, okay, four corners. We can just go to the surface, deconstruct, B-Rep, and have the corners or the vertexes here. 
and this is just the four corners turn everything off only for mesh okay this will be the anchor point uh, on the four corners there is a target point which you can just use okay let me uh, have another copy of this and right click and internalize this these points can be useful if you want to move them so uh, when you compare this with the kangaroo physics we couldn't move these points because if we move the anchor points and then just uh, reset the simulation we couldn't track these points but for now you can always have the track of the uh, reset points and the moved points so remember you can have your reset points here and you can have your locations or a target location here you can give the strength you want so i'm going to add this to the goal you can right click and flatten for a safe solution okay now we're going to give another one how can we uh, produce the springs from the kangaroo 2 interface you can go to the goals mesh and have the edge length this is the most simple one you can you can use this to give a mesh uh, simply a spring uh, like structure you can simply add this to the mesh and the length factor is between 0 and 1 you can say that it's maybe 35 percent and the strength is exactly like the springs from mesh stiffness here so I'm going to give this maybe 500 strength and we can connect this to the goals okay uh from the output you can see that we have let me just connect the geometry to the output you can see the results here okay we can also connect a reset so i'm going to use a button but button here and you can always click on this button and see the results let's turn everything off and here we go and we can simply put the uh, target points on and move this and this is the best thing you can do with Kangaroo 2. You can see that I have moved the points and when I reset the results, uh, it's okay. You can just simply disconnect these target points and reset. You have the points there and if you want a target points, you can simply add them here and have an exact location for the points. And you can also change the number of the length factor uh, without just uh, having a reset or you can simply reset that okay so this is the uh, this is this will show you how simply you can use kangaroo 2 uh, to produce your results okay let's just change the length factor and now I'm going to give this uh, weight something like a weight or something we can go to the kangaroo 2 interface and uh, simply go to the mesh and here we have this we have also a vertex loads here you can see you can give this a vertex load and we can give this to the mesh and you have strength and that is from minus z to plus z uh, so we can give this a minus 10 maybe 15 to 15 plus and add this to the goals you can see that we can have also uh, a weight here so maybe 100 to make it just unreal <laughs> something like that okay and, uh, and that's the plus one okay we can also have the change this have another anchor point so what I will do is to make a copy from this okay and disconnect the ones uh, maybe we want a simple pull up something like this we just move the points on the surface so I'm going to use this in, this in kangaroo 2 and now I'm going to bake this mesh and let's assume we have multiple points in the mesh surface okay and we can just delete the mesh and have the points and these points are exactly on the initial mesh so I'm going to give this to the point let's just disconnect this target and if we connect this to the goal uh, you can see if I reset that uh, okay I didn't connect that 
here we go you can see that we have those points we can move them by simply having a copy of this and giving it to the target and internalizing this we can internalize both of them and move the target ones so this will just help us to produce a form simply without having to reset the results okay here we go and we can just change uh, the forces on this and if I disconnect this anchors you can see that the surface will just hang down from those points okay and we can also uh, work on this many ways you can go to the kangaroo 2 interface and work on these goals for yourself you can also have a load on a point so if you want a, a point to come up or down just let me show you this you can have a load here maybe we want to delete this and bake the mesh this will be a simple example and you can just uh, choose this point maybe and give this a point and now we need a force vector so I'm going to draw a simple line here and rotate this line you can use this for the force vector I'm going to give this a curve I'm going to connect this curve to a vector and that will be a, a one length vector so I'm going to multiply this by maybe 10,000 times because it's going to be a big force to move this uh, okay we have this and we can just connect this to the goal object okay you can see that if I increase the multiplication we can just simply move this up and down and we can rotate this and see the results you can simply have multiple of these and control the height of the mast you want okay and that's it so you can see how simply uh, the kangaroo plugin will help you the kangaroo plugin is a big one it's just exactly like a grasshopper it's it has many tools it, it has many opportunities you can use the uh, mesh machine you can use the collisions you can use uh, the mesh tools and so there is uh, endless possibilities for making a model in the kangaroo plugin but for now this was just an introduction for the question you asked and you can see how simply you can work with this you can combine uh, forces with this and see the results but for the end I'm going to show you how the bouncy solver will give you a bouncy feeling so I'm going to give connect all the things back to the goals object okay and a reset and uh, we have this in the output turn this off and you can see how bouncy this is you can just move these points and see the results it has a momentum you can see that I can move this and see the results I can change the number of the length factor okay I can decrease this so it comes down up and down up you can see that it will make a momentum on the results and you can simply have this on the output so we can have that on the results and we can simply uh, have this mesh okay I'm going to delete the curves and rotate this 180 degree and you can have uh, maybe something like a compression like structure a uh, brick structure or something like that because if you have a tension structure and you just rotate it 180 degree you can have it uh, sort of a compression like structure uh, and you can make it with mortar or something that is that works in compression and not in tension so you can see how uh, we can use this we can just uh, give this a thickness maybe uh, okay this 
five and have a thickness and so you can see the results and that's it so uh, this was a small tutorial for your questions and how you can use this to uh, produce uh, some tensile structures in kangaroo thank you for watching uh, feel free to ask your questions in this uh, videos uh, put a thumb up on the grasshopper videos and subscribe to the channel uh, remember to uh, put your comments underneath this video because it will help us to grow and uh, it will give us energy to record more videos and uh, make better and awesome videos and thank you for supporting us and thank you for all your emails or your messages uh, we had a great energy from you and thank you